Today, Tim released a video talking about, or it's called an RPG Ramble. I kind of like that title, and I sat and I watched all 30 plus minutes of it, and the time passed really quickly. And I haven't uh, done a video like that since the last Shadows cast, and these days I've been working too much and too hard to uh, to assemble the Shadows cast uh, compilation videos where I talk about Korea and and uh, the different game things which are going on here. And in a way, I miss them. I don't really miss editing them together, but uh, but eventually we'll get back to <laughs> back to that kind of update if schedule ever changes at work. But some of the things that I've been doing in my few moments of free time have been really focused on editions. I'm really curious at the moment about different editions of games and not so much an edition wars kind of thing, but just the what distinguishes an edition from another edition. And uh, I guess part of what got me going on that was I received a recommendation to try a game from uh, from Brian Gregory, who said, try Torg. And then recently he said it again, maybe a year after he said it the first time. And I said, what the hell? I'm going to try Torg. I, I never played it when it was new and I barely remember seeing it. I do remember thinking the name was ridiculous. And uh, so I managed to find a really good copy of the original box set, the first edition, other than this little price tag up here in the corner. Um, it's in it's in fabulous shape and uh, contents inside are even better and i got set off on thinking about editions because you know this is edition one and you know i got a, a good supplement to go with it uh the storm knight's guide to the possibility wars and not only did this start start me thinking about editions it got me thinking about the next game I want to run. I've been focused so long on the Rune Camp, RuneQuest campaign, and I put an ad out looking for local players today. I'm more seriously looking to uh, to get local players for it. But now it's time to start thinking about the next game. And uh, Torg is what got me thinking about it. Now Torg has an edition one and an edition 1.5 and this kind of ongoing promise from the game company that owns the license now that one day they'll release a new edition of Torg. But anyway, <laughs> here we have uh, the first edition and I have edition 1.5 on PDF with a bunch of other supplements. So Torg is basically about the possibility wars and that that got me thinking about Moorcock and all the, the different layers of the multiverse and all the different uh, iterations of the Eternal Champion. And I had just kind of finished going over all of my Call of Cthulhu stuff and thinking about how you know, the, the cosmos works in, uh, in a Lovecraftian kind of universe. And it got me thinking about Elric a little bit, so Stormbringer. And so I've got some of my old Stormbringer stuff on the way, but I went looking for an old copy of this and I found it in uh, really good condition, Hawkmoon. And I've been reading this and I've been reading the novels again. And this combined with reading Torg has planted the seed of what I want to do next or the, the, the kind of campaign world I want to do next. And oddly, This has got me looking at a whole bunch of old games. And coupled with this thing about Torg's editions, I've started looking at different editions of old games. So I've assembled together all of the editions of Shadowrun. I now have the Shadowrun first edition hardcover here. I've got the second edition here. I had the third edition here already and the fourth edition. And recently you've seen a video where I received the fifth edition. So I've got editions one through five and I'm going to, on my channel, explore different kinds of character creation from first through fifth edition and see how things have really changed on a fundamental level. And I will also be doing that with this game, Ars Magica. This is the third edition. And recently you may have heard me mention that I got the 
fifth edition and the fourth and revised editions of Ars Magica are on their way to me. And so I'll be going through the different editions of Ars Magica, which is a game which has both changed and not changed on mechanical and setting levels in the course of its history. So it, it's kind of an interesting exploration for me right now. I also now have every edition of the rules of Call of Cthulhu here with me, except for the pending seventh edition. And when it's released, I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be going through making characters from of the early type all the way through to the most modern type, just to see how it feels and how it works, how things interact on a mechanical level and create thoughts on a more narrative level. So that's some of what I've been doing when I'm not gaming, but I actually have been gaming. I ran five sessions of Desolation, and there's a report on that on the channel, and now same old G has started. We've had one session with him, and it's really interesting from my perspective to have started the campaign and have another game master pick up the threads of what I've planted, but not the conceptual background. Like I didn't pass my notes over to him saying this is what was going on. He just knows what he experienced as a player, and he's interpreting that now as, as a game master running a system that he hasn't run before. So I'm also getting to see how the game mechanics, the experience of playing the game and the experience of me teaching the game transferred over to another player who's living on the other side of the earth. So he's had his five sessions and now he's taken over the game and it's it's been pretty exciting. Now our game sessions are quite short. We have about a two hour window uh, after work for me and before work for them. And uh, we're now talking about adjusting our approach to the game so that we can pack more into those two hours without sacrificing the things that are important to each player. And this conversation, I think, is really interesting. Do we want to pack in more action? Do we want to pack in more interaction, right? Dialogue and, and communication in character. Do we want to explore the setting in terms of how it affects our characters as people, or do we want to explore this the setting as explorers, uncovering new things? All of this if we survive the second session, of course. <laughs> the other big thing I found interesting about our online community lately is how excited everyone's getting about fate. I don't know how long they'll be excited about fate. I don't know if they're going to have the experience where they've discovered kind of like their, their go-to game, a, a very malleable uh, system that has a variety of support in a variety of different genres and, and works well in all of them for them, or if they're going to have the experience that I had where the, the game simply does not work for me. And, you know, I, I wholeheartedly ex, uh, support exploring new game systems. Even if at the beginning it seems like you're not going to like it, you might discover that it's incredible, or you might go from thinking it's incredible at the beginning to thinking it's the worst game ever later. I think all of those experiences are valuable. So as members of our community are exploring games that are new to them or games that are entirely new, I avidly listen to their thoughts on it. I'm not so much into actual play. I find I rarely have the time uh, or the time where I can listen and, and focus on what's being said because uh, I'm, I'm grading papers or I'm, I'm uh, planning lessons and that sort of thing in my, in my spare time. Ooh. So being able to focus on the, on the details of a game as it's playing out in the background and all the different interactions and noises and volume levels, it's just not my thing. But when someone takes four or five minutes or 15 minutes <laughs> to discuss their reactions, their considered reactions to how a game seems to work, and then later on after they've started playing it, how it actually works, I find that kind of interaction very, very helpful. And I hope more people will start doing it. So. I raise my cold glass or mug of Coke to all of you producing such great content, and I look forward to listening to more of your explorations and sharing more of mine as time goes on.